good morning guys from the Alabama hills outside of Lone Pine. It is going to be a really hot day today so I'm going to do the brunt of my driving here in the morning hours and it helps that Remy got me out of bed at like 5.30 today. But Beck is coming home in a few days so that's some good news and also I need to uh, prepare this rig for a road trip to Kansas and one of the things I'd like to do is uh, swing by Les Schwab because last spring we got a full-blown brake job on the motorhome and the brake pads get hot and stink on the front and it's bad it like even like a stretch of regular road with like you know maybe six or seven stoplights that will even make the brakes heat up and start to stink so I called them they said they want the customer to be happy so bring it on in and they'll take a look and do what they can do and then I also need to swing by a Costco to return that broken generator and pick up a new one apparently uh, all the Costco's in the area have these generators so that's a big relief so depending on how long it takes for the brakes to get looked at and you know replaced or whatever they end up doing I'm going to meet Rebecca over in Acton at a thousand trails so in a perfect world I'll get there and have like eight hours or more to uh, be able to clean the motorhome up so you know the wife comes home to a clean place. So since the topic of brakes came up today, and also ironically, today's drive is literally all downhill, uh, let's talk about how to uh, brake when pulling a, a big heavy fifth wheel trailer or uh, driving a motorhome. So here's a few things that I was taught. Uh, there's probably some other amazing tips out there, and if you guys have them, please feel free to uh, put them below. Those are so useful to the other viewers. But rule number one is don't ride the brakes. Uh, when you're going down a hill, you know, try to do all of your braking in solid spurts. Like if you are get up to 55, but you need to slow down to 35, well do that slow down, you know, all assertively and just kind of kill the speed and then take your foot off the brake. Uh, that constant friction, because that's literally what brakes are doing, it's friction, uh, that constant friction really heats up your brake pads. So then you want to utilize some features on your vehicle to slow it down other than the brakes. So if you've got a diesel truck, you know, utilize the uh, exhaust brake, that's an amazing tool. But if you have manual transmission, you know, start grabbing gears, you know, downshift to uh, second or third, you know, depending on what speed you need to carry. If you have an automatic, you know, put that puppy down into two or even one, depending on how steep the grade is. But you want to use the gears and the compression from the engine to help slow you down. Well, I hope you guys found these uh, tips helpful. And uh, I know there's going to be some amazing tips in the comments section below from the viewers. But the main idea is safety. So you obviously don't want your brakes going out when you're uh, driving down a hill, but you also don't want to uh, bring on an unnecessary or uh, preventable expense to your budget because you can totally heat up your brakes, glaze the rotors, and you know, just totally make a mess of things if you uh, do things incorrectly. Well guys, this drive has just been super relaxing and enjoyable so far. I'm literally like practically coasting all the way down these hills. It's great. Probably get an amazing fuel economy. So I turned on Pandora today and my uh, Chris Cornell channel popped up. And a few days ago, uh, he committed suicide. And in case you don't know who he is, 
He's a uh, musician and artist who uh, kind of one of the pioneers of that early 90s grunge and alternative mu movement out of the uh, Pacific Northwest. I don't know the details on exactly what happened, but whenever somebody commits suicide, it's just a sad, sad story. Uh, all I can say is his uh, songs will forever live in our hearts and souls, and I hope he has found peace. Okay guys, we are officially off of the 395 and uh, on the 15 south now. And uh, coming up is a, a pass called the Cajon Pass. And it's a big one, I'm guessing it's probably a solid 2,000 foot pass uh, from the top to the bottom. And I thought it'd be a great opportunity to walk you through how I like to uh, descend a hill in this uh, big old motorhome. Okay guys, so this is the top of the pass and the GPS is showing 4,244 feet. Their sign says 4,260. I'm going 45 miles an hour right now, so I'm not carrying a bunch of speed. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab second gear right now. The trick is don't build up the speed if you don't have to. Just kind of putt and bog your way down the hill. And I guess the obvious uh, statement right now would be make sure you're in the slow lane. Okay, two is holding me at about 43 miles an hour and about 3,800 RPMs. And I'm not having to touch my brakes at all. I know I am gonna have to, but not right now. So just past the sign saying we have a 6% uh, grade. Okay, so the uh, RPMs are creeping north of four. So I'm just going to kill a bunch of my speed right now, all in one fail swoop. And by doing that, you reduce the amount of heat generated by the uh, brakes applying friction to the rotors or drums, whichever you have. Okay, things are leveling off at this point. So I'm going to back up to drive because I can safely apply the accelerator. So here's a runaway truck ramp up on the right. I have a question. Has anybody ever had to use one of those things? I imagine that is a very bad day or a very intense uh, few moments before you hit that sand trap. Okay, I'm up to 62 miles an hour and there's another grade section here. So I'm going to kill some of the speed with the brakes, take it out of overdrive this time, because that's also a step that I'll do if I just need to like slow down a little bit. So I guess I should say the order in which I would do things would be take it out of overdrive, some of the newer vehicles, that's called tow haul mode, and then I would go to two, and then on the most extreme of circumstances, go down into one, the granny gear. Okay, about 32.50 on the elevation. Holding at 55 miles an hour and about 3,100 RPMs. Okay, the road conditions are as such where I can put it back into overdrive and coast for a ways. Still holding uh, 55 miles an hour and about 2,200 RPMs. Well guys, I could keep uh, showing you the same thing all the way down that pass, but that's the gist of it, and I'm pretty sure you get the point by now. Traffic, come on. If you don't know it already, I really do not like traffic.
at this line here for Costco gas. This is something I've never really understood. Is it worth standing in line or sitting in line for 30 minutes just to save, depending on the size of your gas tank, 50 cents? No, in my book, not. Now this looks promising. I can make this work. So I came to this Costco in Fontana because the Les Schwab is here in Fontana and I literally think I might have just driven past it on my way in. So here's a real life situation guys. It's pretty much 100 degrees. The dogs are hot. You hot buddy? Uh huh. So part of uh, traveling with dogs is uh, totally being responsible for them. So I need to open up these uh, windows and cool the place off. But the big heat source is this engine cover right here. So by uh, letting that engine cool off for about an hour or maybe even two, that will totally drop the temperature down to a safe level and then I can head on in. Okay, things have cooled off in the motorhome and the old generator has been returned. And here's the new one. Okay guys, forgive the freeway noise, but I've added gas and oil. So here's the very first pull on the new generator. Okay, it ran a bit rough there for a second, but now it's purring right along. All right guys, it's about 6.15 and a uh, security guard for the shopping center just came over and asked if I was planning on staying the night and I was just starting to get comfortable uh, here editing videos. So I uh, have a plan to uh, just move right down the street to the Les Schwab. So when you're actually living in your RV and it needs to get serviced, uh, asking a facility if they'll allow you to stay the night on their property is always like one of the first things you ask. All right, so here it is guys. It's literally just like one block down. Yeah, they have tons of room here. I think I might try to park over here by this uh, dirt lot. Parking uh, right here in front of this store would draw way too much attention. So this looks like it's a brand new facility. These dogs are still pretty hot. All right, so here's the spot for the night. Well, hopefully it'll only be for one night. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and we will see you tomorrow. tomorrow.